Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video, I will show you the most important components of Android Studio because that is probably very confusing for you as a beginner. There is a lot of uh, things happening here and if you come from my Kotlin tutorials, that probably looked a lot easier in IntelliJ. Now we have a project hierarchy here with a lot of folders in it and I will go through all of them and explain what they are for and what the files inside of those folders are for. So first of all, Android Studio provides us several different um, views of our hierarchy. So if you click on that little drop down arrow here, then you can see there are many different um, versions of how our layout hierarchy looks like. So if you click on project, for example, then this means that Android Studio will show you the folders the exact same way they are in your file system. But for us, that is not really helpful. Instead, we want to choose that Android mode, which is just used to show us only those components that are important for us and for Android development. And in almost all cases, you want that Android mode to be enabled because things just get more clear with that. So make sure you have that Android option selected. And then I will just go from the top to the bottom. Let's start with the manifests folder. If you double click on that, then the Android manifest.xml file will open. And that is basically the file in which you put that general app configuration. And every app, every Android app needs such an Android manifest file. Android Studio will um, automatically generate that when you create an app like it did here. And inside of that file, you, for example, put all the components your app uses. Um, that will get clearer when we actually have to do that in um, later videos. And also, if you uh, if your app needs some permissions by the user, then you have to put them into that manifest file. So if you have an Android phone, you probably know it that before you install an app from Google Play, then you're asked to accept some permissions. And whenever your app has a little bit more extended functionality, you have to add permissions for such actions. And those permissions you have to put inside of that manifest file. And yeah, if you just look here, if you read a little bit, then you can see what kind of information you have to put in that manifest file. For example, the icon your app is using or the theme your app is using and so on. You can just try around a little bit with that. And I will just jump right into that next Java folder here. So double click that to open it. And you will see that there are three com folders. And for us, only the first one is important. So if we open that one, you can see that this is basically our package. And inside of that package, we put all of our source code. So for example, that main activity I showed you in the last video. So this is our Kotlin code. And don't get confused that this folder is called Java. This is also called Java when you create a Kotlin project. That is just um, how Android Studio names it. And yet it's just important that you know that you need to open that Java folder and then that first com folder. So if I collapse that again, then we have two different com folders, which is Android test and test. We don't need that for now. Instead, just open the first com folder. And inside of that, you can find your main activity. And if you double click on that, then it will open like here. And that also looks very different from what I showed you in the Kotlin new to pro series. Because in Android, we don't have a main function, which was the entry point for every Kotlin program. Instead, we have that onCreate function. And I will explain that in more in detail in the next video. But that is basically the entry point for an Android app. So in Android, there are just different activities which represent the different screens of our app. And that onCreate function is the entry point, entry point for our app because that is called when our first screen, so the main activity, is created. So in that case, we can put all of our logic that we would normally put in, in the main function Kotlin. In that case, we would put it just in the onCreate function here. All right, so the next folder in our hierarchy is the Java generated folder, which you can ignore for now. It just contains automatically generated Java files that are needed to run your app. So Android Studio just um, uses that folder to generate those files and put it inside of there. So it doesn't confuse you with those files inside of your um, project 
package. But the next really important folder is that res folder and make sure to click on that res folder and not that one. That is unimportant because it is generated. It just contains information for Android Studio and we cannot even open it. So open that res folder and res is short for resources. So inside of that folder, you put all the all the resources your app needs. So for example, we have that drawable folder here. That is the folder that contains all the images, icons and graphical configuration files your app is using. So for example, if you want to include an, an image from that you have on your file system on your PC, then you can drag that image into that drawable folder and access that from code to show it in your app. The next folder includes our layout files. So if you click on activity main.xml for example, then you can see that this window will open or maybe um, this window will open for you, which is just the Android Studio Design Editor. So here you can see that here is that little text that showed up when we started our app in the last video. And here on the left, you can see all the different elements that we can include on our screen. So for example, a text view, which is just a text on the screen, a button, an image view that shows an image and much more. I will go through the most important of them in this series. And if you click on that little text tab in the bottom here, then you can see that this layout file is nothing more than an XML file. And here you can see our text view with the text Hello World. So this is how Android Studio manages to show the different um, display elements and it's actually called views in Android to show them on the screen. So don't be confused by all that new stuff. You will understand that when you follow through that series here. The next folder is the MIPMAP folder and that is actually a resource folder that is not that important for us at the moment. That is just used to put your app launcher icons in and you basically only need that when you want to publish your app and you want to give it an icon that says what your app is about. But for these tutorials, the MIPMAP folder is not important. The next folder inside of the res folder is values. If you double click on that, you can see three XML files show up. The first one is colors.xml and inside of that XML file, if you open that, you can see that we can define our colors that our app is using. So that file is really helpful for us if we want to um, create a theme for our app and always want to use the same colors. So here we can describe the hex values for the colors and then just write color primary in our code so we don't have to write that hex value all the time. The next file is strings.xml. If you open that one, you can see that um, we can put strings inside of that. So that is used for global strings that we want to define for our app that basically don't change. For example, if you want to have a specific text on a button, for example, apply and then you would put that string into that strings.xml file. And that's pretty, pretty useful if you want to translate your app to different languages, because you can just put all your important strings in it and you can automatically let Android Studio translate it. But for this tutorial series, this strings.xml file won't be that um, important too. The next file inside of the values folder is styles.xml. So let's open that one. And inside of this styles.xml file, you can see that we define our app theme here and we refer to our color primary, color primary dark and color accent from our colors.xml and actually tell Android Studio that we want to, we want these colors to be the primary and accent colors for our application. And finally, the last folder we have in our hierarchy is the Gradle scripts folder. Let's open that one. So Gradle is basically the build system for Android. And that means that it is used to um, take all the different components we have for our app. So the activity layout files, the colors, the strings, the manifest, and so on. So it takes all those components and puts them together to an executable app. Inside of that Gradle scripts folder, you can see a lot of um, Gradle configuration and properties files. But for us, only the first two are important the build.gradle project and the build.gradle app file. 
Let's start with the build.gradle project file and open that up. This is just a file that contains um, general build configuration for Android Studio. So for example, it contains the current Kotlin version we are using and actually a lot more here, but you don't have to understand that if you're a beginner, that would just confuse you. But the build.gradle app file here is actually more important. You need that more often. So let's open that one. And inside of that file, you can change the configuration that directly affects the build at app level. So for example, you can specify the minimum SDK version your Android app should run on. So the minimum Android version you want your app to be able to run on. In our case, that is the SDK version 15. And the target SDK version is, so that just specifies for which version we want to um, develop that app. And that is 29, which is the latest Android version, Android Q. Then you can see you can specify the version code and version name in that build.gradle app file. That is just important for you if you want to publish your app on Google Play. Then you have to increase that version when you make an update for your app, for example. And what is really important is the dependencies block here below. And inside of that dependencies block, you put all the de dependencies that your app is using. So for example, all the third party libraries that you want to use in your apps. So for those of you who don't know what the third party library is, a library is just a collection of code resources and functions that help you to solve certain problems much easier because other people wrote the code for that already. So for example, there could be a library that helps you to crop an image. And if you would want to um, write your own code that crops an image, that would be much harder if you wouldn't use that library. So that library, there was someone who um, already wrote that code that crops an image and basically just provides that function that does that. And you can um, include that functionality inside of that dependencies block to use that crop functionality in your app too. And every time you change something inside of the Gradle files, then you see that blue bar pop up here, which says that Gradle files have changed since last project sync. And in that case, you have to sync those project files again to tell Android Studio that you modified that file. And to do that, you just click on sync now on the right here. And then you can see that Gradle is syncing and it's building again and everything was successful. So that's basically everything you need to know as a beginner about Android Studio to start with this series. Actually, there's one more thing, which is LogCAD, but that is something for a separate video because I want to go into detail with that one because it's very important and I don't want to fit that into this video. So I hope you understood everything. If not, then don't mind asking me in the comments and I will answer your questions. And yeah, have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.